Hello everybody. So, another experiment this time. Oh, not experiment three. Hang on a second. It's experiment four, me thinks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So, today, another experiment. I couldn't think of a better name, so I just called it Vertical Offset. It's an idea that I've had for quite a while. It's going to let me... Well, there we go. Ah, a bit of black. It's odd. It's an idea that I had a while back about putting in like a vertical z-axis into a top-down game where you'd walk around, do bits and pieces, like standard stuff that you'd see in um, Zelda clones or even Gold Bounty, the um, other one that I'm working on. So, hmm, this one's a bit of a tricky one. Like, it's mainly only an idea at the moment. Still, uh, give it a shot. Just start off typing out the objective. Um, whoop. Character. Axis, axes, three axes. No, no, I'm moving three axes. Um, no, it's a level with vertical offset. Whoop. Depending on the height of a tile. Add to that later on, I suppose. Let's see. Your own level, only upset depending on the height of a tile. Players can move up slopes. Oh, getting a little bit ahead of myself there. Player can move up slopes to switch between different heights on the tile map. Hmm. I'll probably sketch some stuff up just to give you an idea what I'm on about. Uh, okay, so... Let's go here, have I got my thing on? Yes, cool. Radio. so... Idea is that you'd have, say, ooh... Just create a... That is absolutely terrible. <laughs> Break this into a few tiles to demonstrate. Add an extra one here. Okay, so just imagine this is a tile map that's heading down. I'm doing one direction at the moment, it'll be easier to understand. Well, put forward the basic idea at the very least. So, uh, we'll color code this for now. Whoop, come here, there we go. Yeah. 
and we'll grab or oh, orange will probably do nicely and oh <laughs> let's see blue yeah <laughs> no, probably use a little bit of, there we go, yeah. Hmm, hmm, nah, never stop faffing around. All right. The idea is that you'd have two different heights on a tile map or level data what have you so you'd have one and three one would be level one three would be I don't know like level two I suppose well that's it's not, not very straightforward say so one is at um, height zero three is at height one and you'd have a tile that will be two at the moment it's just going from left to right act as a slope so the player when they'd come along is they'd be able to move this way go up the slope and continue around normally this we just call this x yeah x so the idea behind this is that we eventually create this then for two we create the different cardinal directions like there'll be a ramp that faces up ramp that faces down ramp that faces on the other side as the player moves along one ground and they say oh we're on a tile we're on a slope tile which type watch yeah. <laughs> sorry what type is it it's like ah uh, okay so it's up this way all right so it runs a little thingy of code that says okay as the player moves from one side to the other, it's Z, big air quotes, axis, changes over time. So if you're closer to here, it'll be zero. Closer to here, it'll be one for the offset. When you're on three, the offset will be one. Um, Today, I think I'll keep it simple with this. Well, not simple, more like straightforward. Because the idea that I had here was putting in a, like a platformer kind of behavior. And if we can get it working with this, we can fiddle around with other things like, ooh, isometric games or oblique projected games. Pretty much all different types of tile maps you'll be able to have something similar to this it's just working it out in simple square grid because well it should be pretty straightforward i mean just take a bit of futzing around to get it to work with different types of tile maps or maps in general um Oh, it's an idea that I've had for a while, but never really had an idea of how to tackle the problem. Um, well, that is until now. Like um, the last couple of experimental streams I've done um, seem to be doing pretty well. Like, well, this is more for myself. Seem to be doing pretty well. Like. Um, it's like, oh, I have an idea. When I first start off, it's like, in my head, I'm going, ah, it's probably not going to work. But by the end, okay, it seems to work. Cool. Not so much a lack of confidence or anything, nothing of the sort. It's just, um, yeah, never attempted it like that. Well, in the way that I show in different streams. So we'll 
try with this. Enough faffing around. We'll go basic Z offset. Need a player character. We need a tile map. We need a level zero zero. Need to be able to detect the tile. Player is currently on. Okay. Player character behavior. Tile map set up. Level zero zero four testing. Take the tile the player is currently on. Add basic offset. Um. Hmm. Hang on a second. Yeah. Yeah, I'll start off simple first, then we'll then we'll see what I can do from there. Um hmm. <laughs> We'll do one axis for now. And simple. Um, add slopes. Um, slope tile. Well, it usually helps if you chuck that in. Yeah, add slope tile. Move player at offset. Affected by slope tile. One axis for now. Okay. Hmm. We'll keep that as is for now. Cause Hmm. Like I said, not 100% sure what to do. And as in like, I have no, no idea what I'm doing, and at this point I'm too afraid to ask. Nothing like that, it's just, there's a few different ways I could attempt this. But, as usual, just jump in and see what happens. Hopefully something works out. Alright, where's my little thing? Okay, once again just made a basic project. Going to create a... Level zero zero for testing. Create a new folder called Scenes. Shuck you there. Project, project settings. Uh, window, I suppose. Where are we? There. Um, width is 640 by 360. 1280 by 720. And we're going to go. 2D, keep the aspect, that'll be fine. Setting it up this way it should help bring things in a little bit closer so we can see more of what's going on. Going to create a kinematic body. Call you player. Go Collision shape 2D. <sighs> 
save you as player. Something a bit different. I might actually create just some. Well, actually, I will need to create some um, placeholder stuff. Edit. Uh, for the canvas, we'll give ourselves a little bit more room to mess around with. Add in a tile map. So 32 by 32. Mm, yeah. Well, it's only fairly early days. Uh, let's see. So we have this set up. Green through to orange. Suppose we'll make some green tiles. Yep. <laughs> Change the canvas size up again. I just realized we're going to be have to, we have to make some vertical stuff. All right, getting serious. So we'll make a Make it bright orange, a bit easier to see. A uh, little bit less, a little bit less. We'll make you. Hmm. So if we're going to go there, there, there. Yep, okay. Uh, <laughs> Just working out the height at which we want to offset things. serves. Yeah, blue. Okay. We are going to make you I'm going to shift you over. Okay. Reason is I just keep it as close to the example as possible. Yep, and I just realized this one's off as well. Okay. So that needs to be there, there.
Yeah, that'll, yeah, that'll be good for now. Save this as, where are we? Game assets. Now we need to go into here. We make another folder. We call you sprites. And we go here. Map test. That'll do. Two by thirty-two. We're going to go here. Sprites tile map test. Sprites grab here. Import set to two D pixel. Reimport. We'll chuck that as default. Okay, new single tile. So four zero zero. We'll change you to 16 because we need the this one over here. Go to here 401 and new single tile. Uh, slope test. I'm not sure how I want to set up the way slopes behave but we'll leave it at that for now um, hmm okay so you should be able to draw you out no worries if we draw you in because we didn't set up the offset of course it didn't. Region, region. So this one, the offset is going to be uh, minus 16, I think it was. Yeah, it looks about right. Slope test will do you as minus 16 as well. Okie dokie. So. Because we're testing out just one little bit. select this one okay okay so basic time app setup I want to suppose just to make things actually now that's just extra unnecessary stuff So you could add in like a tile that acts as like a void or a hard wall, but Ooh, actually we'll chuck that down here. Add Add collision your collisions. Collisions. <laughs> add collisions, okay. Check the tile players currently on, play current behavior, one access for now. Okay. Actually, will give you a full fledged character or well, character movement. Yeah, 
we will set up a void just to be safe. Single tail will go there. We're just going to call you void and collision. Put you there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We'll just call this debug, that'll do. Hello world. Yep. It's building material. That's just offset a bit, that's fine. Um, anyway, Sprite, file new. Thirty two by thirty two. That'll that'll work for now. Sprite, canvas size with sixty four. Importantly, mm, now that'll do for now. Um, Save as just call it player placeholder. So, 
export you. We come into here, we're going to add in Sprite. Texture region, grid snap, shoot eight, change you to eight. And boop, boop, boop. Region on. So the collision shape is going to be a rectangle. Duplicate, we'll call this uh, shadow and body. That's just sitting there. The reason why I add a body is because I want to, depending on the height of the player object, if, he, if they're on the floor like this, this will be on floor zero. If they're on floor one, they'll be up here or something. And we'll just get rid of that. Because you have a secondary slide, uh, slide, <laughs> sprite rather, that's underneath. You're saying, okay, this is where player actually is, like controller and all, this is um, where we're making it appear, <laughs> come on brain, <laughs> where we're making the um, player itself appear, manipulating the offset for the height. So that's there, um, zero, might as well, player. save and how is it looking for the moment yeah that's good enough for testing okay player add in we don't have a scripts folder yet so I go here I'll create a folder scripts play it at GD etc etc create goodbye we're going to go variable motion equals uh, vector two zero. We're going to go on ready var body equals star uh, body. Yep, vector two zero offset equals zero uh, step equals how high was that this should be 16 I think uh, yeah 16 okay just call this 16 this will come in handy later on uh, current tile hmm Hmm. Uh, zero. Call this Z step. Uh, tile. Actually, keep it simple, we won't need those, like I'm do I was doing a bit of, um, doing a bit of scaffolding there, which is where you'd um, type out code or um, variables or what have you 
that don't mean anything at the moment. It doesn't work. It's just sitting there, letting you know what's um, what the plan is, so you can refer to it later on. So if I do something like this, um, movement, and we go here, if left and right keys pressed, do some stuff. If up and down keys pressed, whoop, needs to be comments. Uh, do more stuff. Um, move player around here. Like just very, this is what you use scaffolding for. Well, scaffolding, big air quotes. It's a handy tool. Don't use it that much. I really should though, because um, Especially if I'm getting into more complex stuff, that'll be really handy. Move and move and slide. Motion equals. <laughs> Going to go get motion there. Vector two dot zero. Funk get motion. It's just how we've done it before, except we're going to go in here, chuck that there. equals the integer of the input of the is action pressed pressed go ref plus whoop, underscore right take away the int of input dot is action Pressed ref pl whoop, plus underscore left. Indent my indented block expected up. Ah, uh, that'll do it. <laughs> okay, calc dot y equals just copy and paste. You all get the idea. Down and up. Oop, oop, up. Return cap dot normalized. Clack. Cackle. Cap normalized. Oh, I suppose well, uh, move speed equals um, 64, I suppose. Let's give that a shot. Motion times by speed. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yes. test you out you should be a player object that can move around but you're kept in check by the void can't move outside yep and with the offset you can't move up that's where the wait with the um, way the text is offset it looks funky at the moment but we're going to add an offset to it 
and you can't see the little shutter thing because, well, there's no offset yet. Um, we are going to go... Offset. We are going to go body.x. Position.x. Equals. This goes zero for now. Well, number one, it's supposed to be the y-axis because we're going up and down. We're going to go equals negative offset times by Z step. So at the moment, zero times by 16 up here, make it sit correctly like where it is currently. If we were to change that to one, it'll appear above that. It usually helps if you can spell position. <laughs> Postion. There we go. So now, if we use this little black box, that's the middle of level one. We move up to here. Ignore the black box, that looks like the middle of level two. When we're on the slope and we go from one part to another, that's where we can shift between two values. So if it's over here, it'll be on the floor. If it's over here, it'll be almost up, it'll be up almost at the next level. If it's here, it's like somewhere in between. That's the plan for the moment. Um, Hmm. Let's see. We'll just keep a number. I was thinking maybe we could switch this to like, are you on the lower level? Yes or no? Keep that as is at the moment. The um. Oh, so that'll be fine. Overthinking stuff. Okay, so that's there. That's there. We're going to go to here and we're going to add in. Scripts level zero, zero. Go, um, unready by player equals, whoop. Player. Net whoop. Oh, oh yeah, maybe we shouldn't put the player on the canvas layer. That's kind of important. <laughs> uh, holy dooly. Okay. <laughs> player goes there. So that would have been interesting because we're going to be detecting the player position and the tile position. Um. <laughs> Like saying, okay, the player position's like at a weird position compared to the tile map. Like they're not matching up. Now that's probably not making too much sense. Ah, oh, maybe later on I can do it just to have a bit of fun. On ready var map equals tile map. Current tile equals, we're going to go vector two, zero, var, rent, z equals, um, that'll do, yeah. Uh, on ready. 
actually going to use a ready function for once. Well, something important rather. Um, get. Oh, maybe need this. Get um, floor tiles. Ref. To be a. Actually, no, because we're only going to be using this for the moment. Just for once. Bar count equals um, ref dot get used rect. I think that is. Don't think. No, got to go there. Get get to know what's happening. Tile map. I need to get the tiles that are used in the editor. So I think there was a getter. How should we do this? Oh, whoops. Um, get used wrecked. Hmm. <laughs> get used cells, get used cells by ID. We'll just do get used cells. I'm going to do a for with for c in calc dot size. <laughs> so so that's the trick. This that's the thing that keeps coming up as a tricky part. A lot of humming and whoring. Okay, why do I need to get the used cells? Because I need to find out exactly what they are. So, the reference of that, we're going to get the used cells. It'll put it into an array. 4C in the array. If. dot get not get selfie what was it it's another set of getter turns the index of the tile get selby okay well, um, okay if Get cell V, we're going to go calc C. Does not equal to, or is not equal to, which tile is void? Got our little dongle here. Three. Okay. comment is three okay uh, well we already used calc as usual let's go output equals hmm. let's make a basic thing there then we go output append calc dots or calc c Else, oh wait, no, it's yeah, just to be safe. 
If it isn't, then don't do anything. Then at the end of all this, we are going to go... Return. Output. So this will give us an array of what is used and what is not void. Just to find that up there. Constant void there, there, there. Hmm. I think I need to think this over a wee bit. Because we're doing this, what we do is we go. Sorted. That one's sorted. Yeah, what I'm thinking of is going down here. We need to basically get this. Okay. Round. No, we're going to go to four divided by what is the how can we get the tile size? Probably get get cell size or something. <laughs> um cell size, okay. Get cell size. Okay. Whoops. Turn there to there because we're checking player in there, it's going to grab the position that's important. Um, oh, it usually helps if you make that into Y as well, maybe just a wee bit. It usually helps if you spell a bit more. <laughs> Reposition gets so da -da 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 -da. So if we test G. D 
debugger. Get cell size based null instance on null instance. Hmm. Vertile map. Ah, that's by capital M. Yep, that is working exactly as I planned, because I'm not displaying anything. <laughs> it's probably an idea. Uh, so, current tile there, we'll just go... We call this deep... Oh, we didn't even put it in there. Oh no. Ready var debug equals... We run canvas layer debug. Yep, we're going to go... Whoop, debug dot text equals just to be safe we'll go uh, current tile So, 0, 1 on the x, yep. 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we move down to here, that should go to 6. Then 7. So we can detect what tile we're on. That's good. So that's the first part done. Okay. The reason why I put that detection thing there so we can use it for other objects if needed later on. We can put you there and we're going to Okay, so we're going to make this for to do. I'm making this in here because I'm thinking instead of jumping straight to slopes, we just make a switch height at the moment. So, whoops, come here. Height change on entering tile. Hmm. Entering new tile. Set up height offset based on offset. So height based on of tile. No. Going to go detect type of current tile because we can add height when on entering a new tile, so it goes from one to the next. Okay, detect the type of a current tile so we can tell whether it's four zero, four one, or a slope. So we'll need that for this part here. But if we can get just changing the height, depending on the tile we get, then etc. etc. Add a slope. Well, add a slopes. Add a slope. That because we've already done collisions. Okay. Okay. Add a slope tile. Maybe affected by a slope tile. And 
slope slope da, da, da. more slope types okay 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 probably get another coffee and do a quick break come back and tackle this I seem to be a bit all over the place at the moment. Yeah, I'm just think, get my head in the game, we'll get this sorted. We got this. Hmm, actually, wait. No, no, no. Break first, then come back. It's all good. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in a bit.
Okay. Hmm. So. Hmm. Test F. Okay. Detecting the current tile. I reckon we should tackle that first. Okay. And we'll chuck you. Not using Delta. We're going to chuck you up there. On the start, we'll find out what the tile is. <laughs> I think I'll make that a dictionary just so that I can hold all the information like current location, current type of tile, maybe even chugging that z-axis, but for now, go um, position equals vector 2 to go id is Zero. Isn't declared in the current scope. Position ID. Four tiles, get current tile, collapse you down for now. Get current tile, we'll just scoot you up here to keep you keep things close together. You know in other languages there's like a order in which you define functions before they can be referenced by ones down here. Like, say if we were to have get current tile, this is with other languages, mind you. We had get current tile function, but we didn't define it up here, down here. It'll probably throw up an error saying, Oi, what's going on? What, what are you talking about? Get current tile? Are you crazy? But, not that important in Godot, I suppose. Unless maybe if you're doing shaders. I know you have to set it up like that, because that's a different language altogether. But for GDScript, this is, this is fine. Position equals get current tile. We'll do this. Turn calc return. People will probably say, oh, I'll just use dictionary. Full disclosure, not 100% on dictionaries. I have to do a bit of reading. For now, we'll just use an array. That's fine. Current tile, vector 2, 0. There. We could get really cheeky. Vector three, zero. T 
to zero. Because we are working in three axes, might as well do it this way. Okay. Calc X, calc Y, boom. Vector 3, 0, vector X there, there, and we're going to go calc dot Z equals map get cell V. The position is going to be calc dot X, Y. Will that work? There's no errors. Let's give that a shot. Valid get index on, yeah, I figured as much. I just know that in um, other languages in Shader, if you've got a vector three or multiple multiple axis vector, I suppose you can call it. Um, if you type in X, Y, say, okay, just grab the X and Y. But if we go to get cell, we'll just break this up. So that's calc X, calc Y. Current tile dot pursuit. Oh, oh yeah, that's why we kind of got rid of that. Okay. Please work. X, Y, zero, because we are on tile zero. Position one, position six. So if we move over to here, on the slope it should change. Yes, two, one, two. Hmm, okay. That's probably going to out just to test this out player offset equals current tile Z Try this out. So this will shoot up really high. Yep, this will come back down. And some more constants up here. Zero const four zero one equals that was one const slope. Do the usual cardinal directions up is one and two for the left for right, three for down, four for left. Slope so be two. Slope two equals two. If map dot get current wait get not get current tile burp get cell going to go calc dot x and calc dot y go not equals to Slope two. K 
calc z equals map up 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 So this should ignore the slopes because we can't detect well we're not able to move the player outside into the void. But you can move around on floor zero. Not detecting the slope there, now it's going up. It's getting that slope to work. That'll be that'll be interesting. Okay. So that's done for now. Though detecting the slope, that's mm, 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 bit tricky. Add one slope tile. It's already in the tile map. We have player offset affected by one slope. Oh, this one's going to be a bit of a teaser. So, let's jump back onto here. We're going to grab this one. So, for a Slope tile. We'll just work down here for the moment. Because this is going from zero to one, that means the position here is going to be from zero to one on the x axis. So, hmm, okay, okay, I've got an idea. We're going to go, I think it was switch, wasn't it? Nope, it's match, getting confused. Um, get cell v calc dot x calc dot y we're going to go slope two slope slope <laughs> oh, come on slope two and we'll leave it there we're going to make a default value of map we go, no we have to go calc dot z equals map get cell calc x calc y this will need to be sorted later on however For now, this should be okay. Offset's going to be set to that. So this should all still work, hopefully, or not. Not sell V, just get sell. My mistake. Nothing happens when you're on the slope at the moment. You're over there, switches, switches. Good. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Hmm.
var. Um, let's call work equals player position dot x. Modulo by map. Oh, no, not caps. No, 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 no. Map. We seem to be using this map get so a lot. that okay cool if it's slope to position divided by That'll be the thing we had at 32. So player position as it is. Calc X, because we're already doing this function up here. That's fine. Just to get cell size dot x. So once again, we'll do a bit of scaffolding. It's just to keep it there. Um, get the player location. Location X location. We don't need that, so we need to go player dot position dot X. This tells you how many which cell it's on, like zero, one, two, three. This one tells you okay, we don't care what cell you're on, but the leftover bit that's behind. We're going to do that. We're going to go calc z equals the lerp from four zero to four one by this amount size dot x Divided by yes. 
Yes? Yes. Let's try this. So we're moving across. When it enters there, it'll detect how far along you are from here and apply axis. No, it isn't. Because I can't, because I can't spell postion. No, any position, please. Suspense is killing me. We've popped up with an error. Excellent. Wait, not excellent. What the hell's going on? Oh, that's right. Module is only used for integers. No. Uh, I th think there was. Well, there's got to be. Um, there's got to be something in here. Um, mod you. Mod you. F mod. Okay. I remember seeing that in a previous one, previous stream. Okay, well, we'll just use that instead. We'll go um, F mod, which is going to be player position dot x, and map get cell dot x, and do 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 do. How are we doing? Moving across. Do 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 do. Please. Oh, that is lovely. <laughs> cool. So, and the big thing is, we go to here, we are just going to knock you out. <laughs> And let's see. Yeah. 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 Holy crap, that. That works out surprisingly well. Okay. Um, Tell you can move. Yeah, supports left and right. Okay. Um, cool beans. Um, hmm. Just need to. Hmm. Much better than my backup plan, that's all I gotta say. And you may be wondering, what was your backup plan? I'm not going to tell you. No. Nah. The idea was jump back to a previous stream where you've got light detection. Um, for those that haven't seen it, pretty much it's you have a player object. You've got, depending on how much of the player is covered by an object, it changes a value. It goes from 0 through to 9. Using something similar to that, we can chuck it in. I was going to chuck it into this, but instead of light, it'll be manipulating the height of the player. But it would have been very janky and jagged. I suppose it could work if it was like, you know, steps or something. But this, this works out pretty well, actually. Um, yeah, okay. It's a bit of a surprise. So we can get rid of, well not get rid of, say yep those are done. Add in more slope types. We just modify what we've got there. And yes I'm well aware of the errors due to the fact that I haven't even 
reckon put those in? Okay, well, first things first, I suppose I better make some more tiles to, um, what do you call it? And some more tiles so that we can get things looking a bit better. So, going to grab this, this, edit, wait I can just do this, whoop, not that one, there, one slip two, we need problems I might have visually representing this because this is pretty much a straight top-down hmm thinking things again. map we're going to go here 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 pop you up so you there we're going to call you slope two a single tile we're going to call you slope four a single tile Did I? 
Oh, yes, I did mess that one up. Export. Okay. You are going to be facing up, so you're going to be slope one. One. One, two. This one's going to be three then. Facing down. Slope three. Cool. So now we add on some extra things here. Uh, usually helps if you set up the offset region two. So that's minus 16, that's fine. Void, you can sit there. You need to be minus 16 as well. Yes. You need to be minus 16 as well. Yes. See, it looks, it looks a wee bit off. Visually, that is. I'll tell you what, we'll do this. Mm -hmm. Put you out like this. We're going to make a little, little island. We're going to put you fellas there. You fellas there. You fellas, whoops. There. You fellas there. Yep. It's all just visual. If there weren't square tiles, maybe rectangles, but could make it look a bit better. It's not that important, I suppose. So we haven't quite got to the razzle-dazzle part yet. Four, oh no, not four, we are after a slope. One equals, what was it again? <laughs> use enum to sort this out. Probably a better idea. I'll just leave it as is, that's fine. So if we move you around, we can detect a ramp there that'll be snapped down yes there. that'll be another snap this one will be boom yes okay so Slope four, we can get that sorted here. We've got a 
Let's rewind there. Catch you. So that's from there to there. Last one. One minus. <laughs> yep. So instead of going from zero through to one, making this one go one through to zero, just flip it around. So go var work equals the f mod of player dot position y by cell size whoop dot y fucker var calc z equals the whoop lerp blah 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 of dot position dot y by that will do hang on a second no, it's four zero whoop zero zero by floor zero one already saw that error before there we're going to go upwards so we're going to go one minus look divided by map dot get cell size y because we got to there okay Going there, boop. Probably help if I re show the shadow. Do 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 do. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And that one just snaps straight down. Okay. So that means we go, whoop, where are we? Level zero. We're grabbing this and we are chucking you there. But we're going to go location, map size, do, 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 do. How are we doing? Now, that's working surprisingly well. I don't see any errors popping up. Wait, debugger? Errors? Yeah, okay, there's definitely no errors popping up so far. Hmm. Zero, zero. Doing something extra. Let's 
zero 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 one. So we go here and we make another constant well, const constant void uh, zero one equals that'll be seven. Okay, so what we're doing is we are grabbing this one. Save. Go to here. Uh, here we're going to make a void here. Oop, cool this. Void zero one. Texture offset is going to be 60. Whoa, well, wait, no, 32. I'm going to call it 24. It's going to require a little bit of tweaking. So that's a little bit higher than that. Okay. To do, do, do snap options region B whoop, here collisions still going to be like that that's fine region there void over one Mr. offset is minus 24 go to here void I'm gonna rename you just to keep it safe So the player can't move into this part here, yep. But you can move up there, you can move down like that. Okay, well, whoops. Show. Across to here, we are going to put your Z index at minus one. We're going to activate Y sort. Test it now, see how it works. Just realized because we haven't set up the entire thing for Y sort. Okay, so we go here, Y sort, boom. Grab you fellas, we're going to chuck you into there. I'm going to grab you. Just reorganize you there. Save. Control F3. Y sort. Y sort.
Hmm. I was afraid of that. Well, aiming for the sun. I suppose you get burned. <laughs> now we can so we'll we'll do that next. We'll skip the razzle dazzle and try and get it to work with Y sword. So we do there, we're going to go. Why sort support set up? Why sort for tile map? Why sort for tile map? Um, What's well, wrong? Yeah, that's that's hmm. Ten out of ten, perfect. <laughs> um, so we set it up. Um, count for can you Count for the change in Z depth. Is that? I don't know if that's really a term. We just call it. Set depth. No offset. We'll just call it offset. Four tiles account for change in Z offset. Okay. Uh, hmm. So you remember back to the to one of our previous streams when we were getting auto tiles to work. Um, similar problem. So, hmm, I need to think on this one. I'll take my, I'll take a, another break, get some more coffee, and we can sort this out. Some may even say, why you sort this out? I'll share myself out. <laughs> um, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, I've got a few ideas. Well, guess we'll find out in a bit. Give it a shot. Um, yeah, be right back.
Okie dokie. Hmm. One potential fix for it is manipulate players Z index depending on which tile they are standing on. Give that a shot. Um, so let's start with the basics. These slopes need to behave in a certain way. Keep it simple. So we go across to here. We're going to set your Z index to no, we'll set you to one. Set you to one. Set you to Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. The reason for this is we're making it match the floor because these are technically just a funky floor, so to speak. Because the player will be walking flat on this, will be walking flat on that. The these will be on their own separate ones. Will be on plus one. So at the moment, I think the player is on zero. Where are we? Set index K. Okay, currently on zero. Those aren't behaving correctly. Okay. Hmm, 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 hmm. So is that, so is that. None of that's behaving right. I'll tell you what, we'll do just the Z index first. Give that minus one. We'll keep this one zero. This one zero. This one zero. This one zero. 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 Right. So that all looks correct. Okay. If we had a vector four, that'll probably come in handy. Do we have a vector four? So F one da, 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 da. vector type array. Okay, hang on a second. Back to rect two, where those are enum values. Um, back to 
2, they exist. Vector 3, they exist. Vector 4, doesn't exist. <sighs> Going to check something. RGBA using floats on the range from 0 to 1 0 to 255 so I was thinking well a color has four values but it's 0 3 to 1 color 8 another variable current tile equals a dictionary we're going to call this one X zero Y zero Z zero Hmm. Index equals zero for lack of a better thing. I almost call it I. And to make sure that I'm not doing something crazy, let's actually read what a dictionary is. I can know what it is, but how do they use it? So, comma separated by a key value. Accessing keys, first array, holistic blue. Okay. More complex data. Number of keys in a dictionary. So that's behaving a bit like an array. Hmm. We'll just give it a shot. <laughs> Probably doing this wrong, but ah, let's just give it a shot. What's the worst that could happen? Because we've saved this one up here. Which is actually what I should probably do. So Okay, before I do anything, I'm going to copy this. Put you there. Old working method. This 
one new hotness. Get rid of all you there, 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 there. Well, why? Sad. I zero. Hmm. Actually, we'll just call in current tile. I should work calc x there, calc z y, calc z. Uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to do a match. No, we're not. We're just going to use what's here. Calc i equals zero. Mate, that's what. Yes, okay. No, it's not going to be a default value because we've got two different ones. We're going to go. Four zero zero equals that four whoop four zero one equals calc z equals cell. That's normal calc. index equals calc index equals will put you at one return calc index equals um, current tile index x y z okay so that's behaving as it should Overlapping that, that's overlapping that. That still behind there, but there, that still appears behind that. So that's fine. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Because we need to do the index there as well. Okay, so index equals one. We just set that for the slopes at the moment. One. This should sort out the issues with that floor clipping.
Hmm, for the most part, or at least. Um, So that's there, that hides behind there, but if you run here, that overlaps. That's not what we're after. Hmm. So we're getting there, getting there. So how are we doing the player? Transform, position, offset. So what I'm thinking is, we grab all of this, move it to there, come here, but instead of the position, we're going to go, is, oh wait, body, yes, reference that is just offset, okay. That's fine. That's fine. Apparently, there's a way to individually manipulate tiles Z axis. That would be pretty cool. The only one that seems to be causing problems are these pillars here. Nice addition, don't get me wrong. Don't think they're that necessary. Um. giving that a shot. I'm not going to fully remove those. I'm just going to see. That works. That works. That works. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. Now, if we do just regular floors, they'll probably... Do a bit of jumping. So if we come here, automatically that springs up. So does that. Okay. Auto tiles could fix that. Hmm. 
Because hmm. it's at an offset. Don't know how it will behave with Y sword, but that's a way around it. Like, you've got a corner piece. Uh, actually, let's draw this out a wee bit. Where are we here? Oh, not you, not you. And okay, we're going to lose all of this. Have this set up like that. I have to forgive my really crappy bit masking. That's there, that's there, that's there. This is for the uh, SL slope one. Well, it's like this direction. Get the idea. So we'll use this to demonstrate the, um, what do you call it, collision. We set up like a little collision box there and there. So the player can't go through this way and can't go through that way. Or even that way, but it'll be only like a wee skinny little box. So is not effectively going to go from on the floor to move over to here. Oh, we're jumping up to a certain value. Um, the same will work with other sides as well. So. Let's give it a shot. Uh, so we will leave out this void one for now. Uh, See, so three by three by three. Hmm. Do one slope for now. Just to test it out. Well, oh, it needs to be a filled in square. Oop, not that color, that color there. Okay. And, oh, whoops.
yeah, that would do for now. Tile map slope fix. Hmm. So instead of deleting everything we've got there, we'll just add in another one here. We are going to go, whoop, come here. New auto tile, we're going to chuck you there. You were going to be minus 16. Your bit mask is going to, oh wait. Uh, three, two minimal, that's the one. Oh. Uh, oh, some tunnel size. Oh, dang. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Collision. We are going to here for this one we're going to make just a little railing there another little whoops another little railing there once again this is just testing stuff out uh, tile map slop fit eight okay eight 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 So we're facing up, so slope one, eight. Put you there for now. Save to here. Tile map. We are going to go here. <laughs> Can't move that way. We can do the offset on the um, collision shape. In fact, we didn't do the collision shape correctly at all. Dang. Um, all right. Uh, whoops. There, here, there, there. Oh, not that one. There, there. Three, four. Debug, just to double check, we're going to do visible collision shapes and boom. So it's just all the other ones we need to do. Okay. Uh, do 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 do. So okay, well this one, that's just a regular, regular old fella here. Just copy you. You went to here. Whoop. Then we're just going to grab you over here.
of course if I want to make this look good all it's going to be visual well all of it's visual pretty much like oh let's make everything look all nice and purred eh? um but at the moment not too big of a deal go here here Course one, uh, slope, auto one. Yep. <laughs> New auto tile here. Tile size is going to be 32 by 32. That's going to be minimal. We're going to call this one um, slope. Auto four. Wait, one, two, wait, uh, uh, yes. Bit mask is going to be across there. Collision is going to be. Whoops. Collision is going to be over here. Here. That's going to be there. Yep. And we go back to here. Back to time out, we're going to go slope auto two. Copy and paste and scoot you over to there. Canvas size. Now uh, we'll just go two fifty six again.
we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Region. I'm going to go in the auto tile. Once again, it's going to be 32, 48. Bit mask. Oh, wait. That needs to go there. It needs to go minus 16 there. Collision is going to be set up as four. Oh wait, eight. That's going to be four. You up to there. So that is not it. Collision is going to be in here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, yes, yes. Slope auto. Mm -hmm. It's going to be four. going to be 10 wasn't it yeah 10 uh, uh, there where is my uh, yep here Two by forty eight. Boom. That is going to be minus sixteen. Boom. The well, better do the um thing at first. There, collision. Whoop here. Boom. Over here is going to be. be, 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 be. There and run. Oops, that's not it. This one over here. Come on. There. Slope auto. Slope auto two. Two, two. It's eleven. So F three would go to. Slope 2, it's going to be 11, move you off there, jump back to here, grab that, and there. So for one, we are missing something, aren't we? Wait, are we? 
Hang on a second. Auto four. Wait, auto four. That's not auto four. Ah. Uh, uh, not paying attention. Hmm. You over there, slip auto three. So that's nine. Do 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 can't move through there boom 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 Okay and the final thing we'll just do here save <laughs> I think that's throwing it off just a wee bit as this. <laughs> Ah, something's something's growing up there. What am I missing? Movable cohesion shapes. Okay. Oh yeah, that'll do it. Usually helps if you put a <laughs> collision box there. Um, So if we do a test, that should be sorted. Yes, excellent. The next part, well, I think pretty much done enough for today, but I may revisit this for the next thing I want to add. I'm not going to tell you where it is because I want it to be a bit of a surprise, but it does involve 3D space like you see here. <laughs> what I will do just to make, because we've got like hard collisions like that. Hard collisions? I don't know. We will change this to a circle. So that when it bumps on the edges isn't harsh, like you're not going anywhere. It's like here, it'll be like here. Whoop, slide around. But there is another way to get around this, which is create slopes that cut across here. 
and it behaves like going up. Ah, uh, come on, brain. Going up and down on the different. Um, like different angles, like take into account diagonals. Hmm. Can be done. We've got the framework in place. Maybe later, but I've got an idea for something I want to add next to this. I'll probably come back as a maybe like a part two or something. Because if it was just something that's a bit tedious to implement, sure, but because, well, it's pretty much done from scratch. I have no idea how long this will take. Um, I suppose I could give a little bit of a teaser. Um, jumping behaviors. So you can walk around from this perspective and you can jump and interact with different types of platforms. But I need to think about it a bit more. Because this one's a bit, compared to what I have in mind for jumping, this is a lot more straightforward. Like we're doing gradual change over time, which we're able to do with that um, F mod, which worked out really well. However, we're going to be working with something more complex, like really complex. Because the original idea I had for this is getting this kind of movement, excellent, but it's just a start, adding in platforming elements, so you can have like a top-down 3D, well 2.5D, 3D-esque kind of um, platform from this angle. Which would also utilize things like shadows and such. But see how we go. I don't know. Mark off on the list. So all that's pretty much sorted. Four tiles account for the Z change in offset. Z change was falling over the edges of the slopes. That's good. Um, Considering what we've done today, I'm happy with this. I have a few other applications I can use this for. However, ever adding in platformer stuff. Could really work with a few other ideas and designs that I have. Ah, that's just later on, I suppose. For now, I'm quite happy with what I've done here. So I've seen a few, a few other examples of other people doing something similar. And so the idea isn't original, of course, but just like working through my head, like, how would I do it? The way that I've got now works pretty well, and it accounts for a lot of other issues that I was thinking of. Like even just that little collision tweak we did, um, the 
select corners. That's a big deal, like, in the past when I was thinking about it, trying to get it to work, just, you know, futzing around and such. Um, yeah, that was, that was a tricky one. But we solved that today. That was good. It was really good. Um... So let's say that's successful, adding more stuff to it. I won't tell you some of the ideas I've got in mind for it, aside from having to think about it, but like game ideas and such. Um, it'll basically be spitballing, nothing too solid. It's like, um, well, you'd see with, you know, even like your big studios, um, I'm sure there's lots of different examples. Um, it's like, you know, the developer says, okay, this game is going to have, you know, all of this, and it'll have this pretty nifty thing over here, and awesome. But when it actually comes to the game being released, it's like, wait, what about this um, awesome thing over here you were talking about? Where, where's that? It's like, well, couldn't get it to work, didn't have time, ran out of money, you know, a whole bunch of um, excuses and stuff. And a lot of the time it's reasonable, but in this day and age, people will, you know, latch onto that and say, oh, that's, mm, you're a liar, you are... You know, you naughty naughty. Um, okay, I'm over exaggerating a bit, but um, trying to over promise too much. Like, still say, oh, got an idea, but make sure that it's just an idea at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just rambling now. This is whatever. Um, let's put down here. So I don't forget. Well, just as a note for next time, the player can jump around the world using the air, whoop, in implemented um, vertical offset. For platforming. Playforming? <laughs> platforming. Gameplay. Yeah. No, that's good enough. So, no, probably next stream I'll tackle this part here. And, I don't know, see what we can come up with. I mean, this could be interesting. Of course, we didn't really do the whole razzle-dazzle like we do in other streams to, you know, zhuzh it up a bit. But, for now, Squares, it's probably the more safe way, I suppose, to um, develop things like keep it really simple and not too visual. Then later on, when all the back-end mechanics are working, you put on the visual stuff, it's like, ooh, that's pretty cool. Well, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, um, I will see you guys next time. Links to my HIO and Discord are in the description if you want to check those out, and I'll see you next time.